Um, a lot of it. Um, I I love I love the stuff that he's been doing. He has an amazing voice, amazing presence, and and just these fucking crazy ideas about things that I dig a lot. Um, yes, he won a February competition, but he couldn't do much, so he's here right now. I don't know what he's going to do, but I think you're gonna like it. Um, why am I wearing this? Because I misread Steve's um, posting about the event. I thought you which which bit did you miss? Well, I I wanted to be Sir Percy or the Scarlet Pimpernel. I thought you oh. said to come as the Scarlet Pimpernel. Why, why did you think that? What's where that? where on the promo did I fucking? Well, I'm a perfectly dressed as the Scarlet. Did, did any of you read the promo for this gig and see anything about the Scarlet Pimpernel on there? Yes. Everyone did. Okay, everyone except me. <laughs> Who wrote with gusto? Um, I'll call you all motherfuckers. So this is my first feature, and I uh, I thank Steve very very much. I didn't actually have sex with him to get to this point, but um, no, Steve, what I'm going. No. And if somebody else I'd like to mention is Wanda Cruz. She's helped me immensely over the last week to get where I am right now, costume-wise, and what I'm reading. So, fuck you all, basically. I'm up here for about six hours. Okay, um, this one I wrote about last July. I read it about three times and I thought, you get to say you think, oh, I've read it too much, and I've dragged it out for tonight. This one's called Mortality. Mortality is something that we think about at various stages of our lives. I'm sick of people who say they're getting old and near death. Fuck that! You're know the same people who get the flu and say, I'm dying! How pathetic. Fucking wake up to yourselves. Unless you're faced with death or illness, you're the only people that can talk about mortality. Fuck the assholes who are so self-absorbed and don't think about the sick and dying. And I think that's all you guys. I have two, I've had two occasions recently where it was a near-death situation and I actually died. So this poem will take you on that journey. Firstly, the other day I was crossing the road and I was almost almost run over. I know it sounds pretty minor, but it was a rush with death. The first thing that came into my mind is, as my mother would have said, um, do I have dirty, uh, clean underwear on? I think about the practical things in life. The second was a real death situation. I went to the doctor this morning to get some test results. 8am, I like to get there early. The doctor sat me down and told me I only had 17 and a half hours to live. I burst into laughter. Good one, try again. And she held my hand and she sat me down and said, no, 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 you're going to die by the end of the day. I stood up and said, fuck you. What am I doing sitting here talking to you? I've got things to do. Thanks for the fucking news as I run out of the surgery. Fuck, 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 fuck. Why today? I had things to do today for the rest of my life. Time is running out. 17 hours and 25 minutes. Do I go home and fuck my wife stupid? Do I go and fuck the neighbor's dog? I've always wanted to do that. Do I go home and clean the house? Nah, fuck that. Eat myself stupid on junk food. Golden arches, the burgers are better. Even Jesus had a little bit more time than me. 17 hours and 10 minutes to go. Fucking traffic. I'm dying and I'm stuck in the fucking traffic jam. People would ask, how did he die? He was stuck in the fucking traffic jam, they would say. Do I ring, text, Facebook everyone I know and tell them what's going on? What the fuck are they gonna do? See one of those little sad faces? Or maybe give me good luck for the next 16 hours and 55 minutes. I've always wanted to go to New York. I probably won't get there in time. 
I'll call some big rockets on the fly, me dying halfway across the Pacific Ocean. 16 hours and 13 minutes. I finally get home. I sat down with my wife and told her I'd be dead by the end of the day. Oh, tears flowed and she was upset. You know the emotions that people feel when you're about to die? I said, honey, let's fuck for the next three hours. That will give me 13 minutes and two, 13 hours and two minutes left. Maybe we'd go for a bite to eat or something, whatever. We fucked in bed, we fucked on the washing machine on Spin Cycle. Hey man, I really recommend that. It's a lot of fun. We fucked in the car with the garage door open. A little bit risky, the neighbours had kids and all. And we fucked in the rose bushes. It just reminded me of all the pricks that I had to deal with in my life. 12 hours and 38 minutes. We had so much fun fucking, we ran overtime. I blame my wife for that. Staring into each other's arms, holding hands for one hour and 36 minutes. I had to say something, anything. Fucking hell, Bob. I've got 11 hours and two minutes in this fucking miserable world left. What am I gonna do? I don't know, maybe play tennis? Nah, fuck shit at that. Mow the lawn? Nah, I did that last week. Take out the bins? Put some washing on? I should stop fucking procrastinating. I have 10 hours and 43 minutes left. Bingo! I have the first two seasons of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Always loved that show. That would occupy about four hours and 12 minutes. That would give me six hours and 31 minutes to expire. Bob asked me what I wanted for my last meal. It hit me then that time was running out. I requested my meals in reverse. I've always wanted to do that. Dessert before main. What the fuck, I was dying anyway. I asked for banana fritters with lots of golden syrup. And for main, I wanted a fat, juicy, bloody steak. The usual, with peas, etc. Bob said, you're a vegetarian. You've been one all your life. I want a fucking steak. I said. Then Bob asked me if I wanted a priest to hear my last rites. A fucking what? I said. Bob was starting to really get on my nerves. Questions, questions. Give me a break. My right is to have a red-headed burlesque dancer twirling her large breasts in my face in the last hours and minutes of my life. Fuck Bob, time's running out. Book it now. Make sure she's a redhead and got large breasts. Five hours and 38 minutes to go. I ate dinner. It was the best meal I've ever had. Four hours and 12 minutes to go. Where's the fucking dancer? I think I might go and have a crap before she turns up. I'll make it a good one, the big finale. It was warm, sloppy, and it fucking stunk. Three hours and 16 minutes to go. The dancer turned up. Oh my God, she was buxom and she was tender like the steak I just had. Her routine had my heart racing. I had the biggest heart on you could ever imagine. I didn't think I'd get it up again after three and a half hours I had with Barb earlier in the day. One hour and three minutes into her routine, I had a heart attack and died. Oh well. Two hours and 13 minutes of allocated time left. My fucking bad luck. I don't know, was it luck? Luck is winning at the racetrack. Thank you. Thank you. I invented a word called Toledar, which I'll mention in this homie. Um, Toledar is a radar that measures your tolerance. So you can gauge whether you tolerate people or not. So, I'll jump into it. Tolerance. I could barely tolerate myself, let alone anything in this miserable world. I'm beginning to lose my tolerance with you. I didn't even know you. But by God, you are really getting on my nerves, all of you. I will try to contain myself. I haven't killed anyone yet. Hey, but tonight may be the night. Today, fucking mess with me. I do not have to apologise for my lack of tolerance. 
I've spent years and years perfecting a disdain for basically everything that breathes and moves. I believe that as you get older, your Toledar basically moves with everything you confront with every day. I can't tolerate people that tell you you should show some tolerance. Fuck that. I'm allowed to be grumpy and intolerant. There are many things that push me over the edge of tolerability. Basically kids under 17, basically all people over 17, all dogs other than my own. Now I can't tolerate my own dog. Uh, when my wife doesn't replace the toilet roll, when the other toilet roll finishes, that gives me the shit and I get really upset. Anything that works with shopping in it, I fucking hate shopping. So that gets, moves me into intolerability. Basically, I'm more than hot, happy with my toilet art. It reminds me of tolerance in life. I know by the time I reach 50, you might think that I am now, but I'm not, um, I won't be leaving the house. Everything will become intolerable. I know what I'm thinking right now, I know what you're thinking right now, that I'm a sad and fucked up individual. Thank you. Um, this is a poem about my um, dog. I know people write about animals and stuff, but this one's called Pat Me, I Need You. <laughs> Having a bog on the toilet with the door open and your dog comes up and wants a pat. You're in bed getting steamy with your lover and your dog wants to come up and have a pat. Trying to start the lawnmower and you flooded it and the whole neighbourhood knows what you've done and a dog comes up and wants a pat. Walking through the local park, you step in dog shit. Your dog comes up and wants a pat. You walk into a sliding door, break your nose, and your dog wants to come up and have a pat. You didn't put a belt on this morning. Your fat pants fall down in public, and your dog wants to come up and have a pat. You get out of the shower and see who you really are in the mirror. You scream! And your dog wants to come up and have a pat. You fall over and break your leg, and your fucking dog wants to come and have a pat. No more fucking pats! That's enough! Get a life! Stand up on your own four legs and leave me alone! No, 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 don't go! I need you! I love you, my precious beast! Thank you. Uh, this doesn't have a title, but we'll call it Jeremy or something, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Jeremy. I'm your canvas, don't wash over me. I have been away discovering distant lands. I was in fear of falling off the edge of the world. I'm your canvas, remember me. Don't wash over me. I shall return once I've prompted and marked my place, as I had done with you. I'm your canvas, I know you have forgotten, and you've washed over me. I hold you in my heart, my darling. I have a new family and wife with child. I was your canvas. Wash and destroy the image of me as you should, you sh as you shall with hatred in your heart. I did not fall off the end of the world. Look beyond today and conquer as I have done. I'm your distant friend and lover. I will always cherish you. Thank you. I'm coming back in tonight. And it's called Fly With Me. Right wing, left wing. Aeroplanes, birds, angels have wings. I want to flock of wings in colours of that unreachable rainbow. Let the wind lift me up heights where wings have never been before. I want you to seek an atmosphere free of the earth's troubled mind, body and spirit. You can join me. Leave behind everything. Just bring you, my love. Let's break free and start anew. We'll leave behind what we call reality that is everybody's shame. Language, race and religion will know be no barrier with no prejudice and hatred. 
There will be no broken dreams or promises, just love that is you and me. We will name a place we are travelling to because it hasn't been discovered yet. And when we settle, let's remove our wings. You go first, my love. I will watch and protect you from the unknown. Now it's my turn. I will fall into your arms as we become one. Thank you. Introduce you to Charlotte. She's in. Um, hey, actually, I chose the wrong one. <laughs> That's okay. Um, these are. Uh, this is called Monsters Fucking Haikus. Um, you, you might find it entertaining. Let's get started. The winter wind bites my ass. The summer breeze lifts the skirts of unwanted women. Did you know that daffodils only like spring? Birds fly into a window. My razor is blunt again. Thongs don't work in the rain. A flock of birds form the shape of a Cadillac. I like to stay in my pyjamas on sad days. Dogs are more sensitive on rainy days. I've driven 432 kilometres without a break. My shit smells like my breath. I don't like getting wet in the shower. Sex is best underneath the bed. Horny is honey on heat. You'll go blind practicing on your own. Too much money creates self-absorbed assholes. Too little money leads to starvation and homelessness. I want to live in the middle ground, bored and unhappy. Walking on life's nice edge is a struggle. Feed yourself to the worms before you die. Fuck almost everyone you meet. Crumble in the biscuit of life. Paint me green. Orange is not my colour. What's that smell? Was it Rhonda? <laughs> He's wrong or far, I don't know. Let's move on. <laughs> Try wiping your ass with the opposite hand. No, you can't do it, it's impossible. Are all poets sick, perverted puppies? Yes. <laughs> Using someone else's toothbrush is like wearing their dirty underwear. Sometimes it rains, but not on me. Wisdom comes from watching others fuck up over and over again. I cough, and a flock of small birds are released from my lungs. There are too many flies inside. Spray to kill! Who left the door open? Where did all the strangers come from? We don't get mail anymore. What do I do with my letter opener? <laughs> Why is a cup cup? Let's try that one again. Why is a cup of tea hotter than a cup of coffee? Think about it. Banana lounges are more comfortable than sitting on concrete. Cigarettes kill you. So does a bad marriage. That's the ending of my haiku. 
a couple more poems and then a song, and then you can be rid of me. This one leads into um, the song di indirectly, directly, indirectly, indirectly, directly. It's called A Life Without Song. A life without song is like a tree without leaves, a kiss without lips, a hug without arms, a heart without a beat, the earth without a sun, a joyless moon. Life without song is a dance without legs, a rhythm with no beat, a man screaming but not heard, a baby hungry with no mother to feed it, a year without seasons. A life without song leads to chaos, loitering and no order. A suffering soul with no one to save him leads to love lost without passion and emotion is a deafening sound of silence, leads to too much time to think. Life without song reminds us that writing was a silent pastime. Thank you. She's my sidekick. Um, we call it Rhonda Rody. Um, thanks very much, Rhonda Rody. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if this works. Which is better than the Spider Bait version. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'm going to say thank you. Thanks very much for having me. Uh, two things as a rejoinder. Uh, I have, I do, my, with both hands. Um, and not at the same time, because that's fucking weird. Um, <laughs>